Now, junior doctors across England have taken to the picket lines. Again, this time it's uh, a five-day walkout over that ongoing pay dispute with the government and it's their tenth strike action. This comes as more than a million operations have been cancelled, seven million people are awaiting treatment. Well, we're joined by former NHS Trust Chairman Roy Lilly. Good morning to you, Roy. Yet again, it's um, patients that are suffering. I mean, how many more strikes is it going to take before these two sides just talk? I, I, yes, I'd like to bang their heads together, actually. Uh, well, 1.3, I think 1.4 million people have been bounced off the waiting lists. Um, which is, you know, a huge problem for a lot of people and their families. Um, how, how much longer? Well, the current strike mandate for junior doctors actually runs out in this month, so they have to reballot, and they're in the process of reballoting now. Um, last year, we lost one in eight days um, uh, to strikes, one way or the other, uh, and it's hugely disruptive for people running the NHS and running hospitals and so on. Uh, and so what happens from here? I don't know. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious that, you know, asking for a 35 percent uplift, it, nobody in their right mind thinks that's going to happen. The knock on lifetime cost of a 35 percent uplift, including employers contributions to pensions and national insurance and all the rest of it is huge. It's just not affordable in one go. Um, and the junior doctors, I think, well, I, I mean, they, they when they're on strike, the BMA doesn't actually pay strike um, fund, the strike money. There is no strike fund from the BMA, despite it being a very wealthy union. And so the, the doctors lose a lot of money every time they go on strike, and you know, apart from the damage that it does to patients and the and the NHS. So what happens from here, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what the upshot of the ballot is this time around. Um, my guess is I think quite a lot of uh, doctors may well say, well, look, you know, we've had just over a 10 percent. Uh, it's better than the offers that the nurse had, nurses had and the paramedics. Uh, let's wait and see what the incoming Labour government's going to do for us. Um, so I'm not... Sorry, yes. Yeah, I was just going to say, Roy, who, who's to blame for the fact that we aren't reaching a resolution on this? Is it the unions for just simply demanding far too much or is it down to the government for not willing to sit round the table? Well, the... the the 35 percent, it depends how you do the calculations, but broadly speaking, you can make a case for 35 percent if you look at the actual value of their wage packet and feedback in inflation. So that's on the retail price index. That's If you use that calculation, you get 35 percent. There's another way of doing it with the consumer price index, which is a, a smaller amount of money. So, I mean, there's some negotiation to be done around that. Why aren't they talking? Well, the, the government has said, um, Victoria acting to act into the current Secretary of State for Health and her predecessor, uh, Steve Barclay, they both said, we won't talk to you all the time you're striking or there is the threat of strike. The junior doctors say, well, look, you know, we've got to keep the threat of strike to keep everybody's attention focused on this. Uh, and so they neither side will talk to each other. There were some talks uh, a couple of months ago, but they didn't get anywhere. But at the end of the day, you know, you have to stop this silly precondition nonsense and just sit down and talk. Because the one thing we all know is, you know, whether you have a row with your wife, the bloke next door or in the workplace, you end up with having to talk about your problems. And so you have to sit down and have a talk. I mean, the solution to this, I think, is something like a three-year package, something like that, to try and get the doctors back onto some sort of wage parity. But it's their own fault. I mean, they've had a dozy trade union who's let their uh, the value of their wage packet slide over 10 years. Now they want to, they want to re reinstate their value all in one go, and it's just not practical.